In this video, we are going to learn how to unit test our Spring Boot applications using JUnit 5 and Mokito framework. This is the first part of the Spring Boot testing tutorial series where we will cover different aspects of testing like unit testing using JUnit 5 and Mokito, integration testing where we will test our database layer using test containers. Lastly, we are going to also test our REST APIs using Spring's Mock MVC framework. As I mentioned before, this tutorial will only cover the unit testing part using JUnit 5 and Mokito. We are going to use a real world application I have built in my previous tutorials, which is a Reddit clone application as an example for this tutorial. If you are interested, you can check out the tutorial on how to build that application in the description section. And as always, you can find the source code and the written version of the tutorial by the first link in the description section. So without any delay, let's start the tutorial. So the first thing we have to do is to download the source code of the Reddit clone application to your machine. You can find the GitHub link to the source code in the description section. So you just have to clone or download this project to your machine. After you downloaded the project, open this project inside the IDE. And the first thing we are going to do is to install JUnit 5 in the application. To do that, I'm going to open the pom.xml file and add a dependency with the name JUnit Jupyter. And at the time of creating the video, the newest version is 5.6.2. And in the existing project, we already have access to Spring Boot Starter Test Dependency, which provides us necessary Spring Futures to test our application. We will not use these Spring Futures in this video, we will be using it in the next parts. But there is one thing we have to observe and change in this dependency. So if I go inside the pom.xml of Spring Boot Starter Test, we can see that it contains JUnit 4 as the transitive dependency. So as we already have JUnit 5 dependency in our application, this will create a conflict. So to exclude JUnit 4, we can add an exclusion tag to the Spring Boot Starter dependency. Once this is done, if you are using IntelliJ, make sure you re-import the Maven projects by typing Ctrl Shift O or by pressing the Maven icon on the top right side of the editor. So after completing this, we are through the initial setup of JUnit 5. And now let's have a high level look at the architecture of our application under test. So this image will show you the high level architecture of the Reddit clone application. We have our backend application which is built using Spring Boot with MySQL database and this backend is communicating with the Angular frontend. If you zoom into the Spring Boot application part, here we are having a three tier architecture where we have a controller layer, where we have all the rest controllers which are interacting with the services which are defined in the service layer. These services contains the business logic of the application. So the services inside the service layer are using the repositories which are defined inside the persistence layer. Here is where we are storing the data inside the MySQL database. If we have a look at the package structure, we have divided this into packages controller, service and repository and we can see all the classes defined inside these packages. This is a brief overview about high level architecture of the application. So now let's go ahead and start writing our first unit test. We are going to create a first unit test for the comment service class. This class is responsible to deal with all the business logic for the comments posted by the user. I'm going to show a shortcut to create the test from the comment service class. So if you type Control shift t then you will see an option to create the test and if you select the option you will see a window where you can select JUnit5 as the unit testing library and you can also select for which method you want to write the test. Here we have the method contains swear words. Let's select this method and click on OK. And you can see that IntelliJ automatically created the test with a method annotated with test annotation which indicates the below method is our test case. To make this test executable, we have to mark the class as public as JUnit expects all the test classes to have public access modifier. Now let's have a look at the method we want to test. The contains swear method, as the name suggests, will check whether a comment contains any swear words or bad language in it. Here we are checking for some random swear words and if the comment contains any of these words, we are throwing an exception and if the check is passing, we are returning false from this method. Let's write a test case to test whether a given comment contains a swear word or not. I'm going to name this test as should not contain swear words inside comment. One thing we have to remember is to make your test methods as readable as possible. The user who is reading our code should at least get a high level overview of what the test does by looking at the name. But due to the Java naming convention, we cannot always write a perfectly readable test method name. Even though this method name conveys its intent, it's better to have a nicely formatted and worded description. For this reason, JUnit 5 provides us with a display name annotation where we can provide a readable name for the test. So now I'm, I'm giving a detailed description like test should pass when comment do not contain swear words. The next step is to instantiate the class under test. So if you look at through the comment service class, it has a lots of dependencies and almost all of them are classes which are managed by Spring. If you look into the method we want to test, we don't need any of those dependencies inside the class. So I'm going to create an object for comment service inside the test by passing null values as dependencies. And in the next line, I'm going to call the contains swear word method of the comment service object. 
by passing a clean random comment. And now we have to verify that this method returns us the value false or not. We can use the assertions class from JUnit5 to make assertions about the actual and the expected value from this method. Let's make use of the assert false method from the assertions class to verify the written type. And if you run the test by clicking on the green button to the left side of the editor, you can see that our test should pass. So congratulations, you have written our first unit test. But wait, writing unit test is not about always writing the tests which are always passing. Right? As a rule of thumb, we have to make sure that our tests are also failing if something is wrong in the logic of our uh, method. So for that reason, I'm going to make a small change to the method. Uh, that is, I'm going to return the, return the value true instead of false and rerun the test. So now I expect the test to be failing. Perfect. So as always, so always make sure that you're writing a failing test first and then make it pass or just at least make sure that your test will fail when something goes wrong with the logic in the code. Now let's go ahead and write a test for the scenario where we give a bad comment as input and our method throws an exception. As developers, we tend to get stuck into and emphasize only on happy path testing, but it's also important to cover the negative cases. So when the submitted contact, so when the submitted comment contains swear words, we expect the method to throw an exception. So let's write a test case for that. So I created another test with the name should fail when comment contains swear words. And as this method invocation now throws an exception, we can verify this behavior by using the assert throws method from the assertions class. This assert throws method takes the exception class as the first argument and the second argument we are providing a lambda where we are invoking the method under test. This method returns the exception. So we are going to store it in a variable and we can access the exception message by using the get message method of the exception class and verify it by using the assert through method. If we run this test, I expect it to pass. So yes, indeed, it's passing. That's good. Okay, so till now we have used JUnit5 built-in assertions class to make some basic assertions. But we can write more readable assertions using the assertj library. Let's add this dependency to our pom.xml and see how it helps us to write better tests. So let's add the dependency assertj core to our pom.xml and you can re-import the Maven projects using Control shift o After that, let's open the comment service test to see how we can improve our assertions and make use of the Fluent API provided by assertj. In both the tests, we are asserting for Boolean values using the assert true and assert false methods from assertions class in JUnit5. Instead of that, we can use the assert that method, which takes in the method invocation, which we have to trigger as an argument. And if type, and if we type control space, you can see what, you can see that we have the ID support to see which methods we can use for the assertions. As we want to assert that the, the written value is false, we can select the is false method here. Do you agree that this approach makes uh, the test more readable than the previous method? You may or may not agree with me because it's not worth the effort to introduce a new library just for a small case like this. But assert J library shines in the case where we have to we have much more complex assertions, which we'll do in the next upcoming videos. But for our second test, we can refactor the assertions for the exceptions by using the assert thrown by method, which takes in the lambda, which contains the method call. And we can use the method instance of to check what kind of exception this method will throw. In our case, it's spring reddit exception dot class. And finally, to verify the exception message, we can use the has message method. This makes the test more readable and I'm a huge fan of the Fluent API, so I feel this makes it easy to write clean tests. Okay, so until now we are not uh, testing the functionality which depends on the other classes. So the test we wrote for the contains swear words method is just confined to our class itself. And this method does not contain any external dependencies. So to unit test the functionality which has some external dependencies like the repositories, we can make use of mocking frameworks like Mokito to mock out these external dependencies. So you may ask why to mock out these dependencies? Because as I mentioned before, for unit testing, we have to test the functionality of our class in isolation and without depending on the external dependencies. But as our business logic heavily makes use of these dependencies like mappers and repositories, we have to mock their behavior. We will have a look at how to do this in detail in shortly. But for now, let's install Mokito in our project by adding the Mokito all dependency to the pom.xml and again, make sure to re-import the Maven projects using Control shift o Now let's take a different class as an example. Let's open the class post service. And this class is mainly dependent on the post repository, subreddit repository, 
user repository, post mapper and auth service classes. So we cannot really test anything in this method without either mocking or injecting real dependencies into this class. So let's go ahead and create the class by pressing Ctrl Shift T and selecting create new test. We are going to write a test for the get post method. So I'm going to select that method and click on OK. I'm going to rename the test method to something like uh, should find post by ID and I'm going to also add the display name annotation to make it more readable. And what I want to do here is to create an instance of post service class. And if I just type new post service, you can see that we have an error because we have to provide all the dependencies to the constructor. We can create mocks of our dependencies using the mock method from the Mokito class. So let's define these mocks as the class level variables. And I'm going to create mocks for all the dependencies for the post service class and pass them as constructor arguments. Okay, now if we go back to the post service and observe the get post method, it's taking an ID as the parameter and we are trying to retrieve the post by its ID using the find by ID method from post repository. This method will return an optional of the post object. If there is no object matching this ID, we are throwing an exception or else we are mapping this object to post response object and returning it back. So to write a unit test for this method, we have to first mock out the behavior of the post repositories find by ID method. We can do this in Mokicho using the van method. So here back in the post service class, I'm going to type mokito.van and pass in the post repository dot find by ID method. And uh, this method will take some arbitrary um, value like one, two, three L. I'm adding L because it's a variable of type long, then we have to return an optional of the post object. So to specify that we can use then return method and pass in an optional of post. So to pass in this object, I'm going to quickly create a post object with some dummy data and wrap this object in an optional and pass it to the then return method argument. So what will happen in the background is if we execute the get post method, Mokito will return this optional of post object whenever the find by ID method is invoked. This is basically the concept of mocking. So instead of calling the real method, Mokito will just provide the dummy object we want to continue testing the functionality. So in the next line, we are mapping the post object to a post response object. This is the DTO we are sending back to the client. So let's also make this behavior using the same syntax when and then return methods. In this case, we need a post response object. So I'm going to again construct a dummy post response object and name this variable as expected post response. So now we have mocked all the external behavior of this method. So let's call this method from our test and store the response in a variable called actual post response. Now we can verify that our expected post response object and actual post response object contain similar values. I'm going to make an assertion for the ID and post name fields. Okay, so now it's time to run this test and see whether they are passing or not. So you can see they are passing. We can also put a breakpoint inside the map to DTO method of the post mapper and check whether the method is really executed or not. So I'm going to run the test again in the debug mode and you can see that the execution is not stopped at this breakpoint. Mokito completely skipped this method call and mocked the method call by replacing it with the response we have provided. So this is how you write unit tests using Mokito. I hope it's clear for you. If you have any questions, put them on the comment section and I will try to answer them. Okay, now it's time to make some small improvements to our tests. You can see that we are using mokito.mock method to create mock objects. So instead of using this static method, we can make use of mock annotation provided by Mokito. Mokito. So to use that annotation, we have to add the Mokito JUnit Jupyter dependency to our pom.xml file. So let's go ahead and quickly add the dependency. And now you can enable this annotation in our test by adding the extend with annotation from JUnit and providing the Mokito extension dot class as the value to this annotation. So with this, JUnit understands to enable Mokito extension annotations in our tests. Now we have to replace this Mokito.mock methods with the annotation. I would like to show you a quick IntelliJ trick here. Normally you will go ahead by editing uh, this code line by line. 
by removing, by removing the mock method and adding the mock annotation. But we can make use of something like multi cursors in IntelliJ by pressing the Shift Alt J keys. So this will select all occurrences of mockito.mock method inside the class. So now if you press the arrow keys, you can see that the cursor is moving along for multiple lines at once. So using this method, you can easily edit multiple lines at once. So I'm going to add the mock annotation in the same way. So this change should not have any side effect on our tests. So let's confirm this by running. So let's confirm this by rerunning them. And indeed, they are working fine. Now let's quickly test another method inside the post service class. This time we will test the save method. Here you can see inside this method, we are reading the subreddit by its name from the subreddit repository. And then we are mapping the incoming post request to post object and saving it to the database. We can mock the behavior of find by name of the subreddit repository and map method of the post mapper interface in the same manner as we did for the get post method. But the tricky part here is to mock the behavior of the save method. We cannot use the when and then return method sequence here because the save method is not really returning anything in this method. In this cases, we can make use of the verify method in Mokito to check that a particular piece of code is really executed or not. So I'm going to create another test called should save posts with the display name annotation and here I'm going to again create an instance of post service and pass in the mock dependencies and I'm creating some dummy data required to mock the calls for the subreddit repository and post mapper interfaces and finally I'm specifying the behavior of this method calls as we saw before in the get post method example now let's call the save method of the post service and after the method is executed, we can verify with Mokito whether the post repository dot save method is executed or not. We can do that by typing Mokito dot verify. And here I'm going to pass in the object on which we need to do this verification. In our case, it's post repository. And we can specify exactly how many times we are expecting this method to be executed. In our case, we just have one call to the post repository dot save method. So I'm going to just pass in the value one to the Mokito dot times method. So once I prepare this object, I'm going to get access to the methods of the post repository. And as we want to verify the behavior of the save method, I'm going to select that method. And as we don't care what kind of object is passed as the input to this method, I'm going to add argument matchers dot any post dot class as the input to this method. This will inform to Mukito that as long as an object of type post is passed into the save method and it's exactly called one time, I'm okay with it. So let's try to run this method and see if our test is passing or not. So, okay, great. The tests are passing. We can also capture the object which is passed into the save method and can assert whether the object which is passed onto this method really matches our expectations or not. We can do that with the help of the class argument capture in Mokito. Let's see how we can do this. Inside the test, I'm going to remove the declaration of argument matches dot any and we will replace it with the argument capture. So first we have to declare the argument capture inside the class. Let's do that by adding a capture annotation and in our example, we have to capture the arguments of type post object. So let's declare the argument capture of type post and name this variable as post argument capture. Now let's come back to the save method inside the test and add the post argument dot capture declaration here. In this way, Mokito will capture the object which is passed into the save object at the time of running the test. And now we have access to this object even after the method execution. So we can retrieve the post object by using post argument capture dot get value. And let's do some assertions on this object. The value for the ID field should be same as the value we declared in the dummy data. So I'm going to add an assertion that it's going to be and I'm going to add the same assertion for the value for the post name variable. So now let's run this test again. And as you can see, our test is passing. So we have covered lots of unit testing and mocking concepts in this tutorial. Let's wrap this up by refactoring our tests by using the JUnit lifecycle methods. 
Inside the test, you can see that we are creating an instance of post service method for each class. To avoid that, we can use the lifecycle method of JUnit5 called before each, which will execute a particular piece of code we want before each test in the class. So let's create a method called as setup and annotate it with before each. And I'm going to remove the post service class instantiation from the couple of test methods we have and pull it and pull it into the setup method. In this way, we can avoid the code duplication and rely on JUnit to provide the required objects at the time of test execution. Let's rerun the test again to make sure everything is fine. And yes, indeed, the tests are passing. So I hope you learned something new about unit testing and how to use mocking using JUnit and Mokito. If you like this tutorial, please like this video and share it with your colleagues and friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video. Until then, happy coding techies.